some people argue that this long steady state cardio for women in particular can can chronically raise cortisol and it it sounds very scary and the the idea there being that if cortisol has been chronically increased by going out and doing a you know 45 minute just steady state jog or cycle on a bike that this is impairing recovery it's it's limiting your ability to sleep properly and it's affecting fat distribution what does the research actually show here and should women of any age be scared of steady state cardio they should not and we should not discourage any form of physical activity i really don't like any kind of messaging that does because you have women who have been running their whole lives and love it. And now they're saying, oh, should I stop? My friends are telling me I shouldn't run anymore or I shouldn't cycle anymore. And I, I don't like any kind of messaging that is discouraging people from doing exercise they enjoy because that's one of the most powerful things we can do for our health. This cortisol narrative has really taken the internet by storm when in reality all exercise acutely increases cortisol and that's normal, that's supposed to happen. And the idea that it's going to increase fat accumulation is sort of borrowed from Cushing syndrome where you actually do have chronically elevated cortisol and you can have some body fat redistribution or some weight gain in, in your face or some water retention. And so that has spiraled into cortisol face and cortisol belly and, and we need to be avoiding a certain type of exercise or you need supplements or th something cortisol related. And this narrative just isn't true because in healthy folks, our cortisol is really well regulated. And it increases when it's supposed to, and it comes back down when it's supposed to, and it's not something that we need to think about. And just because chronically elevated cortisol in a disease state is problematic doesn't mean that normal acute changes during exercise are problematic. High blood pressure is not good, but blood pressure increases during exercise, and that's fine. So, it, it, you know, we have to put all of these in, in context. And unfortunately, the way they're packaged these days makes it very fear-based and, frankly, not at all evidence-based. So do you think most men and women, and let's, let's say we're talking to someone who's generally interested in aging well and reducing their risk of chronic disease, so we're not necessarily talking about an, an athlete here and their program – do you, th do you think that most men and women should have some form of moderate kind of steady state intensity cardio and high intensity cardio or how do you think about that? I think for the average person, they should do what they will do and what they prefer to do because I think it's pretty unrealistic to expect people in a – I mean, you, you think about how many people are actually exercising at all. It's nowhere near enough. So if we then say, and now you need to lift weights and do hit and do steady state, most people are not going to do that for long enough, consistently enough, that it actually will affect their long-term health. So I come back to physical activity is really important. Let's encourage people to do whatever form of physical activity they will do consistently. And if they prefer a hit because it's more time efficient, then great. But it's not better than doing zone two. They're different. They're equally beneficial for your health. But so is a recreational hike with friends or bike or kayak. Or, and so if you're going to do that and you absolutely hate the kind of structured quote, cardio exercise, then that's fine too. I think we need to be less stringent with the rules around this type of exercise. Yeah, I know personally, I find, I find running, particularly like running on the treadmill, far less enjoyable than going and playing. I've been playing padel. It's like a sort of mini form of tennis. And that kind of, for me, bringing in the fun and the social element, it makes it makes that cardio, it, A, it makes it go by really quickly and it makes it super enjoyable. And I, I'm always looking forward to going back and doing it. So I totally agree. Find something that you actually look forward to doing in some, you know, to some degree. 
The average person is starving their microbiome every single day, and in turn, robbing themselves of their best health. Enter 38 Terra's Daily Microbiome Nutrition, or DMN. What's DMN, you ask? Well, who better to explain than 38 Terra founder and gastroenterologist, Dr. Will Bolsowitz. Thanks, Simon. DMN is a daily prebiotic blend we created to nourish your gut microbes with exactly what they need to thrive. We used rigorously studied ingredients like actazin kiwi fruit powder and solenol resistant starch, both of which have been shown in clinical research to feed the beneficial bacteria, improve regularity, and support digestion and immune health. Of course, we've left out the sugar and the unnecessary fillers that you find in so many other products. And what you end up with is the most complete prebiotic that I know of on the market today. In fact, this is the product that I've always wanted for my patients. Support your gut health today in the most practical, science-backed way with DMN. Simply head to 38terra.com. That's the numbers 38TERA.com and use the coupon code, the proof at checkout for 10% off. 